Hey guys, welcome back to the music segment. In today's video, I'm going to be listing the top 20 goats of R&B. If you don't know what goats are, it's basically the greatest of all time. It stands for the greatest of all time. So let's get started. First, I'm going to be listing the honorable mentions, which include Alicia Keys, Mariah Carey, Janelle Monet, Chaka Khan, Curtis Mayfield, and Luther Vandross. So let's get started with the actual list. At number 20, I put Monica. She is very underrated, and I felt like she deserved to be on this list. At number 19, I put Lauren Hill. Her most famous album is The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, which includes R&B neo, and Neo Soul, and has some songs that are influenced by hip hop and reggae. At number 18, I put Brandy. Two of her most famous songs include The Boy Is Mine and I Wanna Be Down. She also stars in the iconic sitcom Moesha. The Boy Is Mine is featured by Monica. At number 17, I put Prince. At number 16, I put the girl group TLC. It included three members T Boz, Chili, and Left Eye. Left Eye passed away. Their most famous songs include Waterfalls and No Scrubs. At number 15, I put Sam Cooke. At number 14, I put Usher. It was definitely his 2004 album Confessions, featuring the singles Yeah, Burn, and Confessions Part 2 that solidified his position on this list. At number 13, I put On and On. I put, sorry, <laughs> um, Erica Badu. One of her most famous songs is On and On and Next Lifetime. At number 12, I put Diana Ross. At number 11, I put Donny Hathaway. At number 10, I put Mary J. Blige. I love Mary J. Blige. She has two very famous songs called Real Love and Just Fine. My favorite song by her is Not Gonna Cry. At number nine, I put R. Kelly. He's probably the most controversial artist on this list, but there's no doubt about the fact that he can sing. At number eight, I put Aaliyah. Some of her best work include Back and Forth, Are You That Somebody, Try Again, AJ None But a Number. She passed away in 2011 at the age of 22 in a plane accident. At number seven, I put Janet Jackson. At number six, I put Marvin Gaye. Even though he was murdered in, 18, in 1984, his songs are sampled all the time in hip hop. Some of the artists that sampled his songs include 50 Cent, Biggie, Kanye West, Trippy Red, Nas, T.I., Jay Z, and so many more. Some of his songs were also sampled by R&B singers, including Mary J. Blige, Usher, and SZA. My favorite song by him is. Ain't no mountain high enough. And number five, I put Aretha Franklin. Aretha took R&B to unpredicted heights with her 1967 song, Respect. And number four, I put Stevie Wonder. And number three, I put Beyonce. She took her, she started her path to fame with R&B's girl group, Destiny's Child, which is one of the most successful girl groups in the world. Beyonce hasn't looked back since her solo album debut with the 2003's Dangerously in Love. Influenced by Diana Ross, Michael, and Janet Jackson, Beyonce's creative fearlessness and distinctive vocal range have made her known by many as the Queen Bee. At number two, I put Whitney Houston. 
Whitney Houston hit the ground running in 1985 with her debut single R&B's number one, You Give Good Love. Her powerful, powerful and soaring voice gave her the nickname The Voice. She has top selling soundtracks, which include bo The Bodyguard, Waiting to Exhale, The Preacher's Wife, and The Preacher's Wife. Her enduring legacy credited with influencing, influencing such singers as Beyonce and Jennifer Hudson. My favorite song by her is Heartbreak Hotel. At number one, I put Michael Jackson. I don't think I really need to explain why he's the greatest of all time. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you join us next week. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bro, stop. Regressions are rooted in implicit bias, those unconscious attitudes and beliefs that we form about different groups based on the information that we receive from our families of origin, from the media, from other people. We form thought, even though we may not have had interactions around particular groups, we form stereotypes about them, which are grounded in our bias. And so we talk about implicit bias because it acts in your unconscious awareness that people who engage in microaggressions usually don't mean to be racist or sexist or ableist, but it's really those biases that they hold emerging. and to stop the microaggressions. And then asking follow-up questions like, well, what did you mean? Or what do you mean by that? Taking an inquisitive stance because that forces the person to get into the hidden message of what they were saying and to help them uncover it. We call that making the invisible visible because microaggressions, they always have this hidden message there that the recipient, that the giver may or may not be very conscious or aware of. And so by asking, asking or inquiring, well, tell me more, or what did you mean by that? It helps them to reflect a lot more on the statement. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is to focus on impact, not intention, because the almost like an automatic reaction when people are called out about microaggressions is I didn't mean that, or you're taking it the wrong way. Okay, fine, you didn't mean that, but nonetheless, it's important to focus on the impact that you still hurt somebody. And so think about it in schools, when you're moving about in a busy hallway or during lunchtime, it could get crowded in spaces and then someone bumps into you. If you say, ouch, or ooh, you make a noise, usually people immediately will turn and be like, oh, my bad, or I'm sorry. It's the same type of thing. They didn't mean to hit you, but when they recognize that they did because you made them aware of it, they apologize. We need to do that same thing for microaggressions that you may not have meant to hurt someone's feelings, but nonetheless, you did hurt them. And so that's what you have to recognize the impact of your statements.
of week with Alia Jeffrey. What do you call a dinosaur that is sleeping? A dino snore. <laughs> what is fast, loud, and crunchy? A rocket chip. <laughs> Why didn't the teddy bear say no to dessert? Because he was stuffed. What has ears but cannot hear? A cornfield. <laughs> what did one plate say to the other plate? Dinner's on me. <laughs> Thank you for listening. That's all I have for you this week.